Well, welcome everybody to another edition of Last Christian. My name is J.D. Williams in East Texas, and joining me from New York City, my co-host, my brother in Christ, Mr. David Paxton. David, usually this is our um, week in review, and there's mm-hmm. not going to be any news today. So I hope that you guys are not going to be disappointed, but there's not going to be one drop of news today because we got good news to tell you about. It says, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, that we are supposed to comfort each other with these words. That's how they mm-hmm. refers to the rapture. Comfort each other with them. Well, if the rapture happened after the tribulation, I don't think there'd be much comfort. There might be a lot of relief, but I don't think there'd be any comfort. But uh, if you read the Bible the way it is intended, then you understand that you are not going to be around for the tribulation, and you should take comfort in those words. It's really mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. pretty basic, in, in my opinion. Okay, so anyway, David, I promise yeah. you that I was going to give you the show. I'm going to give you the show, All right? And I'm going to try to I'm going to try to keep my mouth shut. And you want to take bets on how long it is before I jump in? Uh, anyway. uh yeah, I got the three minutes. Three minutes is my bet. Okay, mm-hmm. All right. sounds good. Here we go. All right, cool. So I know uh, the last show, we're we're just going to follow up. There's so much in there, but we were talking about what is the rapture. And then we looked at, you know, first Thessalonians, first Corinthians, and we, we got an idea. Okay. That's when Jesus is going to come back in the air, just like Isaac came back to get Rebecca. And we, then we meet him in the air in our glorified body. So we'll have the wedding dress on or whatever you you want to (laughs) analogize that to. So, That'll be cool, <clears throat> but it's not the way you know we've been shown in the movies where you're sitting in and all of a sudden you evaporate and your clothes are sitting on the uh, uh, on the chair, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then you're you're missing out of out of the airplane. There's no pilot, you know, and the cars <laughs> are falling all over the place, which is exciting, mm-hmm. um, but that's not really what the Bible says. He says our bodies will be changed from corruptible to incorruptible. Mm-hmm. So I dare say. I could probably drive better if the rapture <laughs> happens while I'm driving because now I got my new glorified body. I'll be able to steer better. So, so it'll be safe. <clears throat> and then we'll be able, in in my opinion, uh, from what I see in, in Matthew 27, 52, is we'll, we'll most likely will walk around because it's a picture of the harvest. There's always the first fruits. You pick that a little bit, and then there's the main harvest, and there's the gleaning. There's three different parts of a harvest most people don't know. Now, you said that was Matthew, what, 27? 27, 52, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, uh, talk, you know, it talks about them walking around the city. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I suspect we'll be doing the same thing as mm-hmm. once we're a glorified body, because it says those who are alive and remain, then we'll be caught up together with them in the air. So what are we doing in that time that remains? The dead in Christ will rise first then those who are remaining so there's a period of time mm-hmm. well how long is your period of time is it a couple seconds is it a couple minutes is it a couple days is it a you know a couple months uh we don't really have an insight on that but there's clearly a some amount of time so that's also pan out in acts chapter one where they're expecting jesus in in verse six to come back and take over and say you're going to restore israel right now and he's like yeah slow down yeah yeah hold on a minute mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oy vey, the guys are rushing <laughs> mm-hmm. and he said to him it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own power it's mm-hmm. very important to know. yes but you shall receive power and after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. and You shall be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem and to Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. When he had speaking these things, so he's like, okay, this is what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. You're going to be witnessing about me to the entire earth. And then he goes away. And then he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> when he spoke right. these things, while they beheld, he was taken up into the cloud and received him out of their sight. Whoa, wait, wait, whoa, uh-huh. time out. How uh-huh. are we going to do this? And I can see them now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> wait, what? How am I going to get to the end of the world? There's no planes yet. Um, uh. So that's what they saw. 
And then these two dudes, it says two men stood by him in white apparel. We talked a little bit about that. I think that's probably Moses and Elijah because uh -huh. it was Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration right. in shiny clothes. Yeah. So, okay, it doesn't say that anywhere, but it just it fits the narrative. Yeah. Plus, so it doesn't say think. it doesn't say angels. And usually, no, when angels is mentioned, it, it's very specific. Usually, they say angels. They make it clear. Yeah. They didn't yeah, do it this and way. and it's different. It'll be clearly angels too, because angels is an angelos in the Greek, which means messenger. So uh -huh. it could be a person too. Right. Okay. Um, it's just, it'd be a messenger. But yeah. So yeah, you could really got to read that and parse it out. Right. And what are they writing? And what's in the, in context there? Yeah. But this is the best part. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. As you have seen him go into heaven. So he's going to come in the same manner. Mm -hmm. This is when he comes back. And this is when we will rise to meet him in the air. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So that is the rapture. And I want to really point this out. People think the second coming. When he returns to earth. Is the same as the rapture. And it's not. It is not. This is clearly says he's going to come in the air, in mm -hmm. the clouds, in all of these things. We'll rise to meet him in the clouds. Right. When in Revelation 19, he comes down to the earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to rule and reign and puts his feet on Mount Zion and splits in the half. Mm -hmm. okay? So that is going to be a different event. You can look at it as two parts of the second coming, if you want. First, he comes back, gets his church. You know, and then we go in heaven and we have, you know, big wedding and it's going to be a lot of fun. And then we come back together with them. You can look at it as two parts or you can just look at it as a completely separate event. I'll look at the it as a separate is, event. It's, it is a completely separate event. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, two parts would be still two, two of what we call the second coming. Because mm -hmm. the first coming was two different things, was it not? Yes, it was a, the, the birth and the ministry. Yeah, it was the birth first, mm -hmm. and then some years later was his ministry. Right. Okay, but was that was his first coming. Right. Simple as that. So mm -hmm. it's two parts. Right. Same okay. idea. Two parts, two different iterations of it. Clearly, he wasn't going to take over when he's a baby. He wasn't going to go around ministering as a baby. He had to learn and grow and do all sorts of things. Well, mm -hmm. he's got a handful of things he's got to do here. But the... Um, Again, in verse 6, uh, it talks about, will you restore again the kingdom to Israel? So the the Jews at the time, because they were the only ones who were saved, except for a, a handful of peoples like the centurion and whatnot, mm -hmm. that um, and they expected him to come that for that second coming. Mm -hmm. All right? And he's like, no, we have to do all this first, right. and that includes the rapture part. Mm -hmm. So it's it's real important to separate those things, okay? And then we go on to, let's look at that same kind of event here. In Revelation Ooh. chapter 4, this is fun. Yeah, I love going to Revelation. Yes, yeah. and so in, in one, in, in, it, it's an intro chapter in one, two and three talks about the churches, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the church age. All right. right. We do not see the church again until the end of the book of Revelation. Right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? So it says in uh, John says, after this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show ye these things which must be hereafter. So. When Jesus said, what is it to you if some people will see my, my coming again? Remember, he's talking to his disciples. Hey, who's your favorite? You know, hey, mm -hmm. what is it to you if you're going to die and this and that and the other? So John actually saw it. I think he was transported in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, cool. you know, I, I mean, it's, it just says that he was there. Basically, so yep. immediately I was in spirit and behold, the throne, throne set in heaven. So yeah. uh, isn't that a cool thought? Like John is ahead of us mm -hmm. in time, looking at all this stuff, writing it down, going back in time 2,000 years ago to write it <laughs> so we could read it today. <laughs> right. Yeah. What Man. am I on? Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
This is better than Mimi Up, Scotty, any day of the week. Yeah, this is this is cool. Mm-hmm. But check this out. Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna zip into this, and then we're gonna examine some other things too. So, uh, and immediately it was in the spirit, and a throne was set in heaven. Nice, mm-hmm. okay. And one sat on the throne, and he's and he that sat on uh, was to and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow about the throne. The word is iris, by the way. It was a complete circle. Okay. Uh, in, in sight, like unto an emerald. There was a green emerald circle. Mm-hmm. Fact, it's kind of like plasma, if you would. Mm-hmm. We talked mm-hmm. about that in, in Genesis things. And check this out. This is the best part. And round about the throne were four and 20 thrones, like seats. And so, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those are, it's a different word here. Let me see here. That one is Thronos, okay? So around about the main throne was 24 thrones. Mm -hmm. King James made it seats because they didn't want to seem like they were all kings. However, why would we be sitting on thrones? Because we are kings and priests and we rule and reign with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these 24 elders... Okay, and it says in 24 thrones, it's the same word as the f- first word, throne, there was 24 thrones. And then upon these thrones, I saw four and 20 elders sitting, uh-huh. okay, clothed in white raiment, and they had heads, had on their heads crowns of gold. Uh-huh. Right. So let me ask you a question. Who okay. sits on thrones? Kings. Okay. Are angels kings? No, they're not. Okay. So who would be kings? Well, that would be uh, the Christians. Yes. And they're clothed in those, white raiment. Yeah, now, those who have accepted yeah. Jesus Christ and clothed in white. We've heard that before. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Do angels have thrones? No. Uh, no. Okay. So they're not sitting on thrones. No. Do angels have crowns? Not to my knowledge. No. So who has crowns? Again, that would be those that have professed. We are in crowns, right? Yeah, uh, who have professed faith in Jesus Christ. There's a and yeah. and there's and there's different thrones for different. I'm, I mean, not thrones. There's different different crowns, yeah. different crowns for different achievements or. Uh, yeah, those who love is appearing get a yeah. crown of righteousness. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that's what you're looking for the rapture and you're looking <laughs> for a second coming. You got a nice crown. There you go. It's going to be beautiful. Check there it out. Go. Okay. All right, so here we are. They're sitting on thrones. They're in white raiment. So who whose raiment was made white by the blood of the Lamb? And they had crowns of gold on their head. Mm-hmm. All right. The 24 elders is the church. Explain. Because they have crowns. Who has crowns? Well, I'm, I, yeah, I understand that. But uh, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about the, the number 24. Where, where oh, is number twenty four. Yeah. The only the only kind of reference to twenty four is the twenty four. Um, uh, they had a succession of watches where the priests would watch. They had twenty four separate watches, and they would take turns. So we see that in there, watching over there too. Uh, some people say that it's oh, it's the twelve of twelve tribes and the twelve apostles. No, it doesn't say twelve and twelve. It says twenty four. Yeah, and there's twenty four. Uh, gaps we see different gaps in um uh there's 24 mentions of gaps in time throughout the bible too so the, oh. the, you really got to look for it when, and yeah. it's been a debate for years and years and years but it's a representation and okay. 12 is a representation of a, of a body so still trying to figure it out why 24 yeah. but those are where 24 is found yeah. okay. but the clear implication is that these people are representative of the church okay the bride of christ okay because okay. they're around his throne they're on thrones they're wearing the white raiment and they have crowns okay, okay? Matter of fact we can even look up more elders and i, I really want to hammer this home okay um uh, Yeah. <laughs> so there's a few different spots here. Um, and the 24 elders uh, fell down and worshiped God that was on a throne. Well, that's in Revelation 19. And then we're in 
four right now. We saw the 24 elders. Okay. And they can't be angels because check this out. Um, all the angels were around the throne with the 24 uh, elders. Okay. Yeah. So if that's all of the angels, yeah. then that clearly means that they're not angels. Yeah, and it's the same with these four living creatures, too. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I jump down to verse 6. <clears throat> yep. Okay. And so we see clearly that uh, now the four beasts and the, and, and the 20, uh, 144,000 and the elders, and they could learn a song, um, and they fell on their faces and worship God. So there's a lot. You'll get yeah. through a handful of chapters where we see the 24 elders. Yeah. So... The description clearly lets it, lets us know that this is the church. So here we are. Let, we'll back up again. We're Revelation chapter 4. John sees a portal. It says door here right. in, the, in the King James, but the word is portal. Okay. All right. And it the word is thura in the Greek, and it, it best, now it says it's translated door or gate, okay. but it's a portal. So there's this portal in heaven, a fold, like an ex exclosure, a door or a wicked or a larger one. It's an opening. Right. So they just called it a door. Okay. So it's an opening into heaven and he immediately. So here we go. Whoop, now we see him up and he's before the throne in chapter four. And there's the church. Yeah. Can you imagine okay. being him? Yeah, I mean, right. Good you grief. Know, the fuddled. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I, I put just, myself in his shoes for a, a millisecond there, and it just yeah. like, was mind blowing. <laughs> oh, okay. Imagine it. Should. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. There's this big old wide opening. He's in heaven immediately, and then we see the 24 elders around the throne before all of the chaos takes place mm -hmm. all throughout Revelation. Okay, before even the seals before are opened. Before the wrath. Chapter. Yeah, before the yeah. wrath. Before all this stuff comes down. So that's just another way of saying, okay, that's the rapture. Boom. We're, mm -hmm. we're up. We're mm -hmm. in heaven. And, and and it's before all of this tribulation takes place in, in Revelation. And now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to them wicked folks. Yeah, I mean, that's basically, I mean, I'm, you know, that's not what God said, but that that's mm -hmm. basic. I mean, can you imagine, you know, he's just transported, he's in heaven, he's standing in there and he's like in awe and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, probably, you know, can't even pick his chin up off the floor. And God now, he says, okay, now watch this. I mean, basically, it's right? Fun, right? Good grief. I know. Oh, wowie. Okay. So. And then we see now some people say, well, Matthew 24 is talking about at the, you know, after these things mm -hmm. and, and Mark has the same narrative. Luke might, it looks like it's a different narrative. It's at least from a different perspective okay? because he says before these things in Luke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So okay. as we love to go back because Luke is uh, talking to the Gentile nations. Okay. But Luke will be the Gentile. Uh, and Matthew was talking to the Jews, so it was Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark uh, apparently was writing for Peter. So uh, Jesus went out and departed. So remember the chicken event? Okay. Let's let's remind uh, so, people. Let's remind people. Yeah, go ahead. we're going to go back to the chicken event. Okay. Now, right smack at the end of Jesus' ministry, Jesus, the Jews still had the opportunity to say, okay, we, uh, we received the Messiah, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. Jesus would have restored Israel to its former glory at that time, like they just asked in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And these disciples here are asking that very same question. Now, remember, Jesus is alive. They have no clue about the next 2,000 years, what's going to happen. They right. think Jesus is there in order to restore the kingdom to Israel yeah. at that point. He's going to be king, and so are they. That, that's what they're thinking. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's what they thought was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand the narrative from that perspective. It's, it's not a rapture narrative here, mm -hmm. okay, because he, he's not talking about that. They asked him a specific question. So the chicken event is we back from 24, just go back a couple verses into 23, okay. uh, 37. And it says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets 
and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, mm -hmm. even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings. Mm -hmm. And you would not. You were not willing. So he's crying over Jerusalem. I came here. I would have gathered you just like a hen gathers her little chicks. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you refused. So mm -hmm. Jesus is crying. You refused. But behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Mm -hmm. So here is that curse, if you would. Mm -hmm. Your house is now desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me going forward till you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. That point, we changed. Mm -hmm. We're not doing Israel anymore. Mm -hmm. We're going to move to the church. Mm -hmm. The disciples knew nothing about this. Right. All right, but Jesus spoke that in his in his prayer. Oh, he was speaking over them. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he sat down on the Mount of Olives, or in twenty four three, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, "Tell us when will these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the age?" Right. King James says "world," but it's aeon. It says, mm -hmm. "When is the end of this age?" Mm -hmm. In other words. When is all this going to end, and when are you going to take over as king? Mm -hmm. And that's what he said. Take heed that no man deceive you. So this entire narrative is saying, okay, you as Jews, this is what you're going to understand. We're going to do all this. These mm -hmm. things are going to happen. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. Uh, if you're in Judea, flee to the mountains, yada, yada, yada. I hope it's not on the Sabbath. All this <laughs> stuff because you're Jews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he says, after these things, then I'll come back to them who say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus was alive, there was no concept of the rapture because that was introduced in Acts mm -hmm. chapter 1, where he said, you watch him go up, he's going to come back the same way. Mm -hmm. And then Paul explained that as they went along because Amen. he got that revelation. Right. So the, it's very clear that you cannot use that um to for any kind of rapture timing or anything mm -hmm. does that make any sense yes so. it does it does and you know uh, now i think uh, my reading of it is that you can take parts of matthew 24 and equate it to the rapture of the church or equate it to you know, well there's uh, parallels yeah there, uh, there's parallels because it's a separate harvest yeah. so there will be a harvest at the end but that was for the jews the, okay, and, and that's what I want to get into next. We've got five minutes in the first half here. That's what I really want to point out. You need to understand not everybody's lumped into the same thing. A right. farmer has different harvest. Okay. Even Jesus himself said, I have sheep of a different fold. Mm -hmm. When he was okay. talking, and I got to go tend to them. Okay. So there's, and that's why he always gives us the harvest picture. And the main harvest that we see are barley, wheat, Olives and grapes. Okay. These are harvests. Okay. So I suspect there's probably four different kind of harvests. Maybe the ones before the flood were one. Uh, the uh, age of chaos, which the scenes call it, Abraham up to Jesus was uh, another one. And then the church is another one. The tribulation saints are another one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. 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 Because there was one. Um, Oh, one thing, out. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I can't, I can't find it right now. Um, All right, well, let me I'll, finish I'll, this up. Yeah, and we'll, go, we'll go ahead. That yeah, because I've got a question. So now, is the reason, in, but yeah, I, I haven't found it yet. Go ahead. Yeah, so there's there's different harvests, and right. each harvest are at different times. Okay, mm -hmm. barley's before the wheat. We see that with Passover and and first fruits, uh -huh. and then we see Pentecost is another harvest uh, of. The, the wheat over there, and then uh, later on comes the olive harvest, and then the final one is the grapes. We see mm -hmm. that with the oil and the grapes of wrath in Revelation, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll also see that with the, the black horse. He says, hey, uh, a, a quart of wheat for a denarius or a day's mm -hmm. wage. You, you know, you'll get enough to eat for it's working the entire day, but don't hurt the oil and the wine because we see the oil and the grape harvest later. They come later. Mm -hmm. So we see four different harvests each harvest has three different phases so we have a harvest there's the first fruits mm -hmm. which is you take that off and you offer it to the lord the things that ripen first then you have the main harvest okay 
That's when you'll see the big one. And then you'll have the gleaning where they go back into the corners. So whenever you see angels saying, go to the four corners of the world, mm -hmm. and, and this is the harvest, that's the gleaning. That's the final harvest when he says, go to the four corners, because that's mm -hmm. what they would do. They would leave the corners for the homeless people and for the gleaning. They'll go pick it back up later. Okay. So when you see gleaning, when you see four corners of any kind, it's not the main harvest. It's the final harvest of that crop. Okay. So you really got to parse this out. We're not all in one resurrection, if you would. We're not all in the same harvest. Okay. We are all harvested by the same master of the vineyard. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus. You know, he yeah. is the Lord of all. We're all saved by his blood. It's mm -hmm. different, but we have different harvests. Yeah. And okay. that's what people really need to see, that the bride harvest is different. So he uses that analogy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how can there be wedding guests if everybody's the bride? <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to have some people. You got to have the parents of the bride. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got to have wedding guests. These are different groups. You got to have the 144,000, which I believe are groomsmen. So they're over there doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're the wedding party, if you would. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that. So, I mean, we're, we're at a minute and a half here. You want to take us into the second half? Absolutely. Um, what we're trying to do is let you guys know, number one, that the Bible has never been wrong a single time, ever. And it is very clear about the events that will take place when we near the time that Jesus comes back first for his church, and then finally the second coming of Christ to establish a thousand-year reign on, on the earth. The rapture's got to come first. We're convinced of it. We feel like if you read the Bible, that you'll be convinced of it too. And what David's doing is taking us through just point by point on, on this rapture thing, and I want you guys to follow it carefully because this is very, very, very important, okay? Because, you know, just like there's a last play in the football game, there's a last person to accept Christ before the rapture of the church, and you better be among them unless you want to go through the worst time that's ever happened. You think things are bad now? Consider this Christmas Day, New Year's, your birthday, and everything all wrapped into one. That's how good it is right now. I'm, I'm being serious. I am not kidding you guys. It's going to get really bad, and you can avoid that by simply accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hang in there with us for the second half of the show. David's going to tell you more about the rapture, and we're also going to give you an opportunity today to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hang in there with us. And we'll be back right after a very short break with the second half of Last Christian. From Features Story News in Washington, I'm Nick Harper with the Week in Review. U.S. President Joe Biden has signed an agreement that prevents a partial government shutdown from taking effect. It was due to start this Saturday without a further agreement. But the House and the Senate both passed a measure on Thursday which extended the deadline, pushing them further back into March in order for lawmakers to agree a longer-term deal. The stopgap funding bill now gives lawmakers just a week until the next deadline on March the 5th. All of this came on the same week that Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said he was leaving the role in November. He's been the longest-serving Republican Senate leader. It follows divisions within the party and questions over whether McConnell could endorse presumptive candidate Donald Trump. FSN's Caroline Malone reports from Washington. It's time for the next generation, said Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell from Congress on Wednesday. He's been in office for 40 years representing Kentucky and party leader since 2007, the longest stint in Senate history. But McConnell is now stepping down after a time of controversy, trying to get spending and foreign aid bills through the Senate and division among Republicans. Until recently, it wasn't clear if he would endorse the presumed party nomination for presidential candidate Donald Trump. He's called him practically and morally responsible for the January 6th Capitol attack when Trump supporters stormed Congress. McConnell is stepping down just after the November elections. Caroline Malone, Washington. A judge in the U.S. state of Georgia heard closing arguments on Friday in a case that could see the prosecutor removed from Donald Trump's election interference case. The former president's lawyers are trying to disqualify Fannie Willis over an undisclosed affair that she had with a top official on the prosecuting team. It centers on charges that Donald Trump and 14 co-defendants pressured officials in the state of Georgia to overturn the election result in 2020 that saw Trump lose to Joe Biden. 
Also this week, President Biden and Donald Trump both visited the U.S.-Mexico border. The competing trips to Texas highlighted the importance of immigration in this, a presidential election year, as both men vie for the Oval Office. FSN's Benji Hire sent this report from the border in Texas. Joe Biden calls the situation here a crisis. The border, he says, is broken. More than 6.3 million migrants have been detained crossing into the United States illegally during his time in office, a higher number than under his predecessors. For him, this trip is about damage limitation. The White House has hinted at tougher border security and asylum measures, but recent polling shows that immigration remains a top issue for voters. And that's being pounced upon by Donald Trump. Benji Hire in Brownsville, Texas. From Bureaus Worldwide, this is FSN. Okay. Hey, folks, we are back for the second half of this particular show. I think it's part three on the Rapture. Who knows? We're going to get into dozens <laughs> of shows, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Amen. So, hey, JD, we're having some fun, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, by the way, for you guys, uh, we, we spent some time in between. Uh, segments here so i gave david a whole bunch of stuff that he's not going to have time to talk about today so you need to hang in there mm -hmm. with us because we're going to be going to this for a while go ahead david it's going to be a little bit yeah. yeah all right so actually you know what let me point that out now if you have any questions or you want to address something uh just send it to the hidden day at protonmail.com the hidden day at protonmail.com and We'll see if we can answer your questions. Amen. As long as they're not Amen. kooky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and even if they are, we'll still have an answer for you. Well, we'll try, but I don't yeah. know. I'm, I get some weird <laughs> questions sometimes. Okay. Now, um, we see that I, I was pointing out in the first half how Matthew was written unto Israel because they expect him to come back. We saw mm -hmm. in the book of Acts in the last show that um, they were still expecting him to to restore the kingdom to Israel right. at that point. The, the disciples here at this point didn't know anything about this church thing that was coming up, right. uh, let alone a rapture and, and a dispensation that is there. So I wanted to point out that church is separate from Israel. It's also a separate harvest, which we were talking about. Yeah. So the separate harvest would mean a separate harvesting time. Mm -hmm. And then we also looked at... Um, you know, the four winds. So mm -hmm. I know you had a question on Matthew 24, and uh, I was down where he says, it, um, yeah. what was it, 19? Um, let's yeah. see. I'm, I'm looking here. If you find it before I do. Um, it. Uh, and he says, yeah, the, the, he'll come and immediately, there it is in 29. 29 immediately yeah. after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, mm -hmm. and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Mm -hmm. Okay, so people use this all the time. It says immediately after the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because what was the narrative here? This was while Jesus was still alive. Mm -hmm. The disciples still expected him to restore the kingdom to Israel at that point. Right. And remember, just before this, in verse 23, Jesus was alone and he was praying over Jerusalem. He says, I would have gathered you like a like a chick, like a hen gathers her chickens, mm -hmm. right. a chicken event. But he said, no, your house will be left desolate and you won't receive me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Then mm -hmm. the disciples say, uh, oh, look at the temple. Isn't it great? When are you going to restore this? Mm -hmm. So now from his Jewish perspective, and remember, there's different harvests. So he's not talking about the church here. He's talking right. about what the disciples specifically asked him. Mm -hmm. And it's all very Hebrew centric. Flee from Jerusalem. Don't be on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Everything like that. It, the whole chapter into 25 is very Hebrew centric. Right. This is what's going to happen to the Jews, not the Christians. Amen. Okay. Yeah. So, and they use this here immediately after the tribulation. And, and that's it. They cut off everything. They go, oh, look, it says immediately after the tribulation. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You've got to read it in context, and you have to have corroborating evidence, Amen. and you have to get it within the picture of the entire Bible. Right. All right. You can't just cut that off and say, well, that's it. Too bad for you. I'm yeah. out. Yeah. My discussion uh, with another individual before dealt with um, verse 31. That's Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's where verse we're going to go. And, and he will send his angels with a great shout of a trumpet, and they'll gather together his elect from the four winds. 
from one end of heaven to the other. And I, my, my contention in that was that this was not about the rapture of the church. And I mean, I got a, I got blowback from that, okay, uh, saying that it was. And I am convinced that this is not the rapture. The rapture's already taken place. The tribulation's already taken place. And now God is instructing the angels to go all around heaven and get everybody, all of us, because we're out there having a good time. We've been in heaven for seven years. He, he grounds us all up, and we go, because that's mm-hmm. what it says, I mean, I'm right just, now, think of it as Hebrew centric as well. Okay? okay, go ahead. Then, so after the tribulation, the sun's dark, the moon turns to blood, and the stars mm-hmm. are all falling from heaven. Now, right. that word, they, a lot of uh, flat earthers will use that. Oh, look, the stars fell from heaven. How can that be if they're so far away? The word <laughs> there is uh, astare, which is where we get our word stars, and it means to be strewn. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. It literally says, and things strewn in the sky will fall from heaven. Mm-hmm. That is extremely indicative of the meteor showers that we expect right. during the tribulation period because it doesn't mean a gaseous ball far, far away. It says anything that's just thrown up in the sky, mm-hmm. which could be meteors and asteroids. And that mm-hmm. would make sense if some of the cataclysms that we're expecting with other conspiracy theories that are out there right. that are... Uh, a lot of fun to look at mm-hmm. but when we see those we'll see that there will be massive amounts of meteors coming down and that word stars here in english is a status which is something strewn mm-hmm. it could mean the meteors as well exactly the same as a gaseous ball so far away so you can't uh-huh. use that to for flurf anything um but the son of man coming in the clouds because he's talking about him hey you won't see me again until you say blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord after that then they'll say that at this point, mm-hmm. immediately after the tribulation, because right. after the tribulation, right. Jews will say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then the sun will be darkened, the moon will turn to blood, and then you'll see the sign of the Son of Man in the heavens. You'll see the Matzeroth working it. And check this out. This is where you know it's not the rapture. What do we know about the rapture? Who goes where to meet whom? Uh, all Christians living in dead. Well, first, the dead rise first. Mm-hmm. And then the those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ living on earth join them. Did um, we go to meet Jesus in the air and he comes air, back in, the same way? That in he the went clouds, out? right. In the clouds, okay. My question is this. Where are angels in that passage? They're not there. They're not there. But this says in verse 31, And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds from one heaven of other to uh, one hand of he- heaven to the other. Right. Okay. So you got to ask yourself, this is this a different event? Because now he's sending angels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And okay. my contention has and- always been that the angels gather all of us who have been in heaven for a while seven years we're having a good time okay and now all of a sudden i got an angel coming to me says okay it's time for us to go take care of the earth now you know come on with me Mm -hmm. and i go without question and happily dressed in white yeah and that's it that and we because at the end of revelation we do come back with him gathers everybody up in revelation 19 he Mm -hmm. comes back we're following him in nice white linen it's gonna be great yeah. Okay, he comes out with the double-edged sword out of his mouth, destroys the armies, and we rule and reign with him. Amen. Read Revelation 19. You'll see. Yeah, it. There you go. Okay, so he gathers everybody, but check this out. It also says uh the sound of the great sound of a trumpet, but it's not the trump of God. It's a different trumpet. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And it's mm-hmm. probably one of those revelation trumpets that you heard mm-hmm. of. Mm-hmm. And it will gather the elect from the four winds. What did we talk about in the first half about the four of anything in any kind of a harvest? Mm. Again, that, that one. Go, that was a, the gleaning, remember? The, the, right, yeah, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the corners still. That, that, that's where I'm focused. Yeah, yeah well, four winds, four corners. Yeah. It's all the same yeah. mindset. Okay. When you have the main... Uh, the first harvest is the first fruits, mm-hmm. and you pick all the stuff that ripened and it's perfect. You bring it to the Lord. You worship, you know, and you worship okay. the is Lord. That the, that is that fruit. the is that the ancient saints uh, or whatever? Uh, is oh well, yeah, it was Matthew twenty four uh, okay. twenty seven fifty two. I think okay. yeah. So remember, the dead in Christ rose with him. 
Mm -hmm. at the yeah. resurrection. That was a type of first fruits. Right. Uh, the 144,000 will be a type of first fruits because remember, there's different harvests. Just yeah. like there's barley, there's wheat, there's olives, there's grapes. Right. Different harvest. Okay. It's all the same farmer. Yeah. Different harvest. Right. Jesus said, I have sheep of a different fold. I got to go tend to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's different people. And we'll get into that. Remind me about John when we're done with this. We'll okay. talk about the different people. Okay. Different people groups. Okay. Different uh, ecclesias, if you would. Okay. So, but this one says they shall gather from the four winds, which means this is a final harvest. Okay. This is the gleaning. First fruits, main harvest, gleaning. There's three parts to every harvest. Okay. You take the best, give it to the Lord. Take the main harvest, you do that, you leave a little bit in the corners, mm -hmm. and then you go back later and send the servants in to, yeah. to collect the things in the corners. Yeah. So he's and, elect. And that's going to be about all that's left after the tribulation period, all the people that did take yeah, the mark of the beast things. and everything else. I can imagine there's not gonna, it's not going to be a tremendous amount, in my opinion. It's not going to be yeah, a tremendous amount. Well, it'll amount. be the greatest revival, but it'll... It'll only be with the people that are left. <laughs> yeah, now, <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. The world gonna be yeah destroyed. Sadly. Yeah. yeah, and then he goes in to learn the parable of the fig tree, which we all know. Yes, so we've seen this, but again, yes. it's Israel centric. Mm -hmm. This entire yeah. passage is Israel centric. Even the elect, okay, the righteous is one thing. When we read the book of Enoch, it says there's just two groups of people: the elect and the righteous. Right. The elect and the righteous at the end. Mm -hmm. But the elect, um, most of the time, when you see it. You know, you, you got to take into account translations, but the elect is, is Israel. Well, the mm -hmm. righteous, we're, we were made righteous in the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. And they'll be um, the elect. They were chosen by God himself, and he made that covenant himself. And he put Abraham to sleep, so he couldn't even, like, he can't even do anything about it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is this is the end over here, yeah. um, clearly. And it's the gleaning. It's the final harvest. Yeah. And, again, it's... You know, to um, Israel centric. So let's take uh, a look at, you know, it's this one. Uh, where did it go now? <laughs> now you're running into my problem. So I'm, always, yeah. I'm always losing. Time. Um, now we talked, oh, John the Baptist. That's what it was. It's over here. Yeah. JB. Okay. I call him JB. Okay. All right. So, and this, this is where we are. And ironically, can you give um, me the uh, the book? Yeah, oh, we're in Second Peter three three. Second Peter. Ironically, okay. this is where we're at because it says, "Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking mm -hmm. after their own lust, mm -hmm. and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Yeah. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation.' That is clearly evolution language." Because that's and, what they have. They have, and I got right? an email just the other day that almost <laughs> did that word for word. I mean, it was really mm -hmm. close. You know, it, well, it hadn't happened for two thousand years. What makes you think it's mm -hmm. going to happen now? Because the Bible said so. You want me to give you the, the book and the chapter and the <laughs> that's verse, 2, and then you can read it. Behind it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go ahead, David. Because <laughs> yeah, if you if you asked me that two thousand years ago, I say, hey, I don't know. It could be a while. <laughs> now I'm like. It's already been a while, as you should expect at any moment. Right, exactly. Um, and they're willingly ignorant of the that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, standing out of the water. So it, we see that's huge in these in the last hundred years. They mm -hmm. pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed evolution because it's anti-God. Right. And here we are at the end of the age, and they want people to be indoctrinated with anti-God stuff. Right. So they don't believe in this whole rapture thing. Oh, that's crazy. You know, mm -hmm. everything's the same as it was. And millions of years, it's just yeah. been like this. Uh -huh. No, it hasn't. There's a cataclysm. 4,000 <laughs> years ago, there was a flood. Changed everything. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you missed that part. Right. But these are the scoffers. And, the, and even to the point where even a lot of Christians say, oh, you've been talking about this rapture, you know, mm -hmm. since uh, the, like the 80s. It's like, well, yeah, because I've been looking since the 80s. That's when I was saying. <laughs> been waiting so, for it since then, yeah. Yeah. So you got to ask yourself this, J.D. Would you rather say, oh, I, well, in case he doesn't come, I don't want to look foolish? Or would mm -hmm. you rather be like, I'm going to look for him every single day, and if it's not for another hundred years, then glory to God, I was watching out for him Amen. out my window every single day. Every day. And he's going to come back and say, thank you so much. I saw how much you longed for me mm -hmm. all those years. Oh, that's right. where I'm at. Uh, that's, 
I, I wish I could say I wake up every day and think that, that I'm a human being just like everybody else. And occasionally, I mean, yeah, I pray. Sure I do. And you know, I believe in my Lord and I love my Lord. But there's also those times because you know, I am a human being. I'm not thinking about the rapture right that second. Mm. You know, I've actually come to that point now in my life where that's the first thing I wake up. Oh, mm. not yet. How ah. about today? Is it going to be today? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping. To, I vote I'm, for today. I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping to join you, um, in you know, to have that recognition or that understanding or you know, immediately every morning. I, I would love that. I, I would love that. And um, yeah, could you get a crown of righteousness for that? Yeah. Yeah. I do think about it more than a lot of people do. I'll say that in my own defense, but um, I, I know I, I can do better. I can do better. Lord, help me do better. Well, we all can. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's check this out. It's Second Timothy four eight. Second Timothy. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. And this this is beautiful. So henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Remember we talked about the crowns oh, yes. in, in Revelation 4. Mm -hmm. This is the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, mm -hmm. shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yes. And we are to hasten unto his appearing. Mm -hmm. Hastening unto. That's That's a good one, too. Let me pull that one. Hastening. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Yes. Yeah, we love hastening. Who doesn't love hastening? <laughs> man. Wow. I mean, I, I, I can't help it. I'm, I, I just keep reading Bible verses out as you're looking. Yeah. And uh, so you'll have to forgive me. Every now and then I'm still reading yeah, while you're we're talking. Off in la la land. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it says, you know, blessed is he who, and we, we're supposed to hasten his, in other words, we're supposed to rush him in. Uh -huh. We're supposed to pray him in. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. So, and you get a crown of righteousness for loving his appearing. So I want to speak to now the different harvest times. Okay. I know we spoke earlier about um, uh, the four harvests that are in the Bible in, in Revelation, specifically barley, wheat, olives, and grapes okay. as we'll see later the olive trees come and then we see the grapes of wrath being trampled out mm -hmm. mine eyes have seen the glory of <laughs> um so or you could do veggie tales the grapes of wrath they're cute uh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they go around causing trouble uh. uh so the scoffers come and they criticize it now that that's clearly fulfilling prophecy so everyone says oh where's this coming oh Keep saying that because that means it's coming faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm liking yeah, the okay. fact that you're that, that you're telling me it's not going to happen. Look, it's been too long. I'm liking that because the Bible is yep. telling me that that's exactly what's going to be said right before it happens. So, yeah, keep talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I want to point out the difference between Israel and the church. Okay. That's because important. a lot of people think, oh, they'll, they'll all be resurrected in the same day at the end. No. No, they won't. We saw how um, Israel in Matthew 24 will be resurrected at the end because that's the gleaning there. Mm -hmm. And it'll come around and it'll get them. Right. And then the first fruits of, of Israel is you know, the 144,000. He said, mm -hmm. these are the first fruits. And then mm -hmm. later on, we see the end of the gleaning. Mm -hmm. So with that seven-year period, you have the first fruits of the 144,000. You have the main harvest. And then you have the gleaning. You see that entire picture. Mm -hmm. uh throughout the book of revelation it's pretty wild yeah. but that's the jews the church is already up right and exactly. we're already out we saw that in revelation chapter 4 mm -hmm. where the 24 elders are clearly the church representation mm -hmm. of the church because mm -hmm. they're on thrones they're wearing right white robes made white and they have they have crowns mm -hmm. so that's the church mm -hmm. and they rule and reign with them they're kings and priests, it says later on. Mm -hmm. Who's a king and a priest? Mm -hmm. We are. Yeah. Angels aren't. Um, no, no one else is. We are kings and priests okay. uh, after mm -hmm. the order of Melchizedek because we follow our king. So the, to corroborate this, I want to bring you to uh, Matthew 11.11. 11. Okay. Not, not lemon, lemon, 11.11. 11. Okay. And it says, verily I say unto you. Now, who's he talking to here? 
Uh, is this um, a John? No, Matthew eleven eleven. But I'm going to back up a little bit. Okay. And Jesus is talking about the blind So, uh, oh, 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 um, I'm I, I caught up with so, you. I caught up with you. Yeah, yeah. So John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. So John's in prison, right? Mm -hmm. And from from other uh, writings, we we pretty much know that John was in a scene, and they were the ones that were expecting the Messiah. They got they mm -hmm. were the Zadok priests. Not okay. the Pharisees, not the Sadducees. They were the Zadok priests. Okay. Those are the ones that were expecting the Messiah, and they knew who Jesus was. And those are the ones that, for the most part, became the Christians, which is why they kind of disappeared, because uh, they're they're the church now. Yeah, well, okay. Zadok priests, and Zadok uh -huh. is, uh, you know, um, righteousness. So they were the righteous priests. They called themselves. And it came to pass in Matthew eleven verse one. I'm going to start up there uh -huh. uh, when Jesus had made an end. Of commanding his 12 disciples he departed thence to preach in, in the city teach and preach in the city mm -hmm. now when john heard in the prison of the works of christ he sent two disciples because now he's in jail going hey i thought you were going to take over right <laughs> right okay what happened mm -hmm. again it's that same narrative i thought you were here to take over when he came to be the lamp mm -hmm. he sent two of his disciples and i and he said unto him, Are thou he that should come, or do we look for another? So two of the disciples came. Are you the one who's coming, mm -hmm. or do we have to look for another one? Because yeah. they were expecting Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again these things which you do and hear. Okay. Now this is very important, this narrative. The blind receive their sight. Mm -hmm. Now tell John this is what's happening. The blind receive their sight, the mm -hmm. lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. This is imperative because the Essenes did not, the Essenes had the doctrine of the dead are raised, where the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't. Mm -hmm. So, and the Old Testament doesn't have that. It doesn't say the Messiah will raise the dead. So, when we see this, we know he's talking to the Essenes. That's, that's another good thing. Mm -hmm. But check out, uh, as a side note here, w what was the um, what was the remedy for the blind to receive their sight? The remedy for the lame is to walk. The remedy for mm -hmm. the lepers is they were cleansed. The mm -hmm. remedy for the deaf is that they hear, and the the remedy for the dead is they're raised up to life. Mm -hmm. And what's the remedy for the poor? Uh, well, riches, but Have not the gospel preached to them. Yeah, I was just saying it, it's the riches of knowing the Savior. I mean, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to. Well, the poor. Say it. It, it literally says so. When people say, "Oh, the Bible wants you to be poor," no. The no. Bible says you preach the gospel and you'll have wealth, not no. to lavish it upon yourself. We know yeah, that, right? But you'll. Because that's part of the kingdom. Yeah, he became and, poor that we might become rich. And right it's now, I've I've got I've got to say this right now. David is not talking about a prosperity gospel here. No, okay? uh, because you know, you're, if, you're if overemphasizing you're, it. Yeah, at if, that point. if you're if you're listening to somebody like Peter Popoff, or you know somebody that's that's going to sell you some tap water and tell you that they blessed it or something, you're you're on the wrong path. And, and, you know, you're not going to go to your mailbox. There's not going to be a million-dollar check waiting for you if you do what he told you to do. That's not how no. it works, and that's not what he's telling you. you that's not what he's gospel. talking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I just want to make that clear. We're not prosperity yeah. gospel preachers here. That's not happening. No, no, no. You, you have to read the Word. And yeah. when you read the Word, all of these things are what Jesus exchanged for us right. so you can have these blessings. And it clearly, he says, they're not just so you can lavish it upon yourself. They're Amen. to teach and preach and be ambassadors in the kingdom Amen. so that's why you know any any extra money i get boom it goes yeah. out and yeah. you know what then he sends more okay you're gonna do good stuff here's more and he then sends more and he sends more Amen. that's just the way it is it's not so you can have another mercedes sorry I am right mm -hmm. or a private jet i mean you, you, you know. can have one because it's safe but <laughs> you know you don't need five yeah okay so go give it to someone else who needs one <laughs> So, blessed is he, whoever shall not be offended in me. As they departed, Jesus began to say to multitudes concerning John, mm -hmm. why did you go out to the wilderness? You see a reed shaken with the wind. So, let me jump on down to verse 11. Verily okay. I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. 
Look at that. John the Baptist is the greatest man ever, right, J.D.? Yep, that's what he says as far as being on war, um, in the world. Yeah, okay. It's clear here. Verily I say, among them that are born of men, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. However, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. The janitor what? in heaven is greater than John the Baptist. Right, because it's a different dispensation. Amen. He is of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Mm -hmm. Okay, we mm -hmm. see that again in Luke sixteen sixteen, where it says the law and the prophets were until John. This is a different age now. Amen. We see that same picture on the Mount mm -hmm. of Transfiguration. There's mm -hmm. Jesus, there's Moses, there's Elijah. Moses mm -hmm. and Elijah represents the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, then, and then Peter says, hey, let me build a house for everybody. And what happens? Big cloud knocks him over. Stop that. Hear Jesus. It's only about Jesus now, mm -hmm. not the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is the age of grace what it's called this is the church age what we call it and it is the bride of christ okay Amen. this is the age we are in and this is what we're going to see it's different than the old testament saints it's different than matthew 24. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. different from the final week of mm -hmm. daniel chapter 9 when i believe the two witnesses will probably be moses and elijah again mm -hmm. because they represent the law and the prophets so going back to that plus all of their signs that they do are exactly what Moses and Elijah did. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good hint right they, there. Same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. we see him on the Mount of Transfiguration. We mm -hmm. hear about him, the law and the prophets, unto John. And then we, then we see Jesus, you know, God says, this is my son, hear him. It's a different age. And we need to mm -hmm. understand that, that the church will not be here for that final seven years, which has to deal with Israel returning mm -hmm. back to the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Okay, it starts with 144,000 being the first fruits and brought up to the wedding feast. So that that's that, that's all I got to say about that. It's a different time period. It's a different mm -hmm. group of people. It's a different um, shepherd of, you know, sheep of a different fold. Mm -hmm. It's a different time frame. The church is not Israel. Sorry, yeah. it isn't. It's not. Tribulation, different group. Take us out. Well, I'm going to let you take us out, and I'm going to let you do it in, oh. in this way. And that is, I want you to explain to people I've done it, and you got 30 seconds to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, um, how do people accept Jesus Christ? It's real simple. That you know, God gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him might not perish but have eternal life. He says, "Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you'll be saved." Confess with your mouth, Jesus, you're my Lord. doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be a long thing. I love you, Jesus. I want you to be my Savior. I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life. Something along those lines. But he's mm -hmm. going to know, and he's going to give you some words if you ask him. And then you just receive him and start to read the word. Start to Amen. walk in it every day. I would highly recommend you do that before, A, you die, or B, the rapture. Yeah, because either one of them is not going to be good news for you if you haven't accepted Christ yet. So we do hope that you will, and we hope that you'll join us for the next show, The Last Christian. Uh, remember, we're here three times a week, and uh, no matter where you're listening to us, we, we appreciate you being here. Invite some of your friends, and if you're on YouTube, subscribe, like, click, join. We'll see you next time. Good night. Some people won't give you the real talk on drugs, but it's time we know the facts. Fentanyl is killing people. It's a powerful opioid, often made illegally and commonly mixed with illicit drugs. It can even be pressed into counterfeit pills that resemble prescription medications. Just two milligrams, about the size of a few grains of sand, can potentially be lethal. This isn't an ad to scare you, but it is an ad to make you think twice. Get the facts. Go to realdealonfentanyl.com. This message is brought to you by the Ad Council.